Let's talk about the distinction between a cardinal utility function and an ordinal utility function. We know that a utility function will map a consumption bundle into a specific real number. We also know that with the help of a utility function, we can compare two bundles. If we believe that the actual value provided by the utility function for a given bundle has meaning, in the sense that we can think of this number as some quantity measured in some specific unit, then we say that the utility function is cardinal. In English, a cardinal number is a number that represents an amount rather than order. Considering the following simple example, say that the consumer has utility function u equal to x1, x2, and that this is a cardinal utility function. Two cookies and four glasses of milk will result in the utility of eight, while four cookies and four glasses of milk will give the consumer a utility of 16. If the utility function is cardinal, then these two numbers have meaning. The second bundle will give our consumer twice as much utility as the first bundle. It used to be common in economics to consider utility as if it had physically quantifiable attributes. Early economists thought that utility behaved like any other measurable magnitude, such as the number of cookies we eat or the total amount of calories in a cookie. Utility was thought to be measurable in a unit called utils, although no one really suggested exactly how to measure utility. Utility functions were all cardinal. We say that a utility function is ordinal if the actual number that pops out of the utility function for a given bundle has no interpretation. The utility level only has meaning when it's compared to the utility level of another bundle, and the only relevant information is then whether it's strictly larger, equal to, or strictly lower than the utility of the second bundle. How much larger or smaller the utility is has no interpretation. Here is an example. Say that my utility function u equal to x1, x2 is an ordinal utility function. Utility from the 2,4 bundle is 8 and utility from the 4,4 bundle is 16. The only information we can deduct from this is that the second bundle is strictly preferred to the first but we cannot draw any other conclusions. We don't know if the second bundle is just a tiny bit better or a huge improvement. The name ordinal utility function comes from the property of the utility function that it can be used to order bundles. The relationship between a preference relation and a utility function is an important one. We have concluded that given a utility function, we can create a preference relation. We have also concluded that you can end up with the same preference relation from many different utility functions. We will now make a distinction between an ordinal utility function and a cardinal utility function. In order to create a preference relation from a utility function, all we need is for the utility function to be ordinal. In creating a preference relation from a utility function, all we will do is to compare bundles. We never use the actual utility amount. Now let's look at the problem in reverse going from preferences to a utility function. If a consumer has a weak preference relation, which is a total order, will it be possible to create a utility function from this binary relation? If you think about it, you will probably realize that it will not be possible to create a cardinal utility function. If an individual has weak preferences over all possible bundles, you will not have enough information to assign an interpretable number representing utility from this information. However, in most cases, you will be able to create an ordinal utility function from a weak preference relation. Think about it like this. First, identify all indifference curves. Then, create a utility function such that it assigns the same number, it makes no difference which number, to all bundles belonging to the same indifference curve. For two different indifference curves, assign a larger number to the preferred bundles. 
This strategy will work in most cases. Unfortunately, not all preferences can be represented by a utility function. Google lets you graphic preferences if you're interested in an example. Since you can assign any number to bundles on an indifference curve, you can create many different ordinal utility functions from the same preferences. The utility functions U and V will order bundles identically. Preferences that can be represented by the utility function U can equally well be represented by the utility function V. So here is the main point. In microeconomics, we do not assume that consumers have cardinal utility functions. It simply makes no sense to assume that the measurable quantity called utility could exist. Instead, we do assume that consumers have weak preference relations and that they are able to compare two bundles and say which bundle they prefer in a consistent way. Working with the preference relation is not so convenient. Therefore, we construct an ordinal utility function from the preference relation, which will be much simpler to work with. However, we must remember to always treat the utility function as ordinal. And we need to keep in mind that there are many, actually infinitely many, ways of representing the same preferences. If you're told that Petra gets utility 620 from a given bundle, you're not allowed to exclaim, wow, that's a lot of utility. 